Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and welcome to my June wrap up. Today I'm going to be telling you about all the books that I read in June. So June was a slightly weird reading month for me. I read seven books in June, which is slightly less than I would usually read in a month. Um, and also three of those books I had started in May. Um, so it was a slightly slumpy reading month for me, uh, which doesn't happen that often. Um, but I feel like it wasn't that I wasn't reading. It's just that I was being slower at reading than usual. Um, and also quite a few books I was reading, I didn't feel like I was getting into them as much as I wanted to. I'm not sure, I did read some fantastic things this month, um, but I feel like I didn't have like as much good quality time spent reading as I would have liked. I also have already spoken about um, four of the books that I'm gonna talk about in this video. Um, so this video is probably not gonna be too long because I have already spoken about those books elsewhere, but regardless, let me tell you about what I read in June. And let's start off with a highlight, which was fantastic and I haven't spoken about yet on my channel. And that is Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. Um, starting with this because I do like to start with the classics. This is a LGBTQ plus classic from the 1950s. Um, and this I buddy read with Jen the Librarian. I'll link her channel down below. Um, and this one was so fantastic. This was so fantastic. I've never read anything by James Baldwin before and I feel like I have heard a lot of people talk about the content of his books and so I would kind of knew what to expect going in content wise but I feel like I haven't actually heard that many people talk about like how just thoroughly amazing his writing is. Like every sentence is like beautifully exquisitely crafted. Every scene is amazing but I feel like I hadn't heard as many people talk about like the sheer amazingness that is his prose. So this book um, is set in Paris in the 1950s and it's about a man called David um, who's an American man living in Paris and he and his girlfriend Hella have kind of sort of temporarily split up. He asked her to marry him um, and she wasn't sure whether or not she wanted to so she's left Paris to go to Spain to think about that um, and while he is left behind in Paris David ends up meeting a man called Giovanni and beginning an affair with him and it's about their relationship um, and kind of how it goes wrong and you do know kind of from the beginning that something has gone very very wrong. I feel like it's an incredibly powerful novel in lots of ways. The relationship between David and Giovanni is really well done and David's kind of struggles with his sexuality, his inability to admit his sexuality to himself, to Hella, to Giovanni in some ways. Like I feel like the way that is explored is really really interesting um, and the way like Giovanni's room, this room that um, David goes and like lives with Giovanni in um, for a while, I feel like the way that room is used like as a metaphor um, was really well done. In fact, there's a lot of like really powerful symbolism in here and I'm not usually one for like powerful symbolism, but like the last paragraph and the symbolism of that, oh, it was so good, it was so good. I love this very much. One of my favorite books of the year so far, one of my favorite classics of the year so far, which is exciting because I feel like I have read a lot of wonderful books so far this year, but I feel like I haven't read as many like new favorite classics. So that's very exciting. Another thing that I've really found very interesting in this um, is how it looks at like, um, the difference between Europe and America at this point in time. And I feel like the way that for David, America is sort of all about conventionality um, and Paris and Europe is all about like um, kind of bohemian different possibilities for life. I found that really, really interesting. Um, and there's just so many things in this that I found fascinating. I actually read this at the very end of June in about 24 hours and it was really nice because I feel like I've been having a bit of a slumpy month. Um, and so to read a book that like blew me away that much and where like the writing just completely grabbed me was very, very exciting. And yeah, this is amazing. I can't wait to read everything that James Baldwin ever wrote. Moving on to another modern classic, quite a bit of a more modern classic. Um, this month I also read The Night Manager by John le Carre. This was first published in 1993 and I buddy read this with Carolyn from Karen's Reading Ramblings. I don't know whether this book was like a victim of the slump or like a perpetuator of the slump um, in that I did read this and I did get through it but I feel like it took me a while and I feel like I found this book a bit more of a slog than I might have done at another time. This book, if you don't know, is a bit of a spy thriller, which is what John le Carre is kind of most known for. Um, and it's set in the early 1990s and it's about a man called Jonathan Pine um, who works at a hotel as a night manager and ends up kind of um, volunteering slash being recruited to be a spy in order to infiltrate the operations of a arms dealer um, called Roper. I have kind of mixed feelings about this book. This is the second book I've read by John le Carre. I also previously read Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy 
sky and I think I've come to the conclusion that I really enjoy screen adaptations of John McCarry's books and I don't really like his books that much which I think is partly just because this genre maybe for me is something I really enjoy on screen but I just don't enjoy so much in book form um, I found Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy really confusing and I thought that was maybe because it was mid-series but I did find The Night Manager a bit confusing too. I found it less confusing um, and I would say in general basically like in the chapters where we we're following Jonathan I felt clear what was going on and I was really really enjoying it and some of the dialogue is fantastic um, but in the chapters where we were following like um, other people elsewhere not Jonathan I did find that I was quite often a bit confused especially about like who was betraying to who which maybe I was supposed to be confused about but I feel like there were several I feel like there were moments where it was revealed that someone was working for a different team or something and I was like I really have no idea what that means I'm, I'm just a bit lost and that might just be because this genre isn't really for me in book form and it might be because I was having a bit of a reading slump month and I wasn't like as focused and taking in all the details as much as I might have been at another time um, but I feel like that did slightly make this a struggle for me and so although there were moments where I loved the writing and where the dialogue was great and there were some scenes that I really got into and probably from about the midway point I did get more into the story I did find it quite confusing overall and another thing that I did find a bit frustrating about this book was the presentation of the female characters which was in general poor. I feel like the way this book looked at women was rather James Bond and very, very 90s. In the fact that like all the female characters were like said to be and presented as being clever and interesting and strong but also they were only there for the main character to have sex with and that was their only plot purpose and I feel like I find that like even more frustrating than a female character within a book who has no personality. It's just even more irritating that they're like oh they're a fully fledged human but also that's their only purpose. That, that annoyed me a bit. The next two books I want to talk about are all works of historical fiction, which were on the shortlist for the Walter Scott Prize. Um, I have reviewed all of these books in a separate video, which I'll link down below, but I'm able to talk about them a bit here. Um, so one book that I read this month for that prize um, was Fortune by Amanda Smith. Um, this is a book which is set in Trinidad in the 1920s and follows various characters who get caught up in sort of the oil rush happening at that time. We're following two men, Eddie and Tito, and also Tito's wife, Ada. And what happens when Ada meets Eddie and how that affects all of their lives. I really like Fortune. I think it's a strong read with um, kind of really compelling character dynamics. I do feel like it took me a little bit longer to get into, but again, I feel like that might be um, having a slightly slumpy month rather than anything to do with the book. Um, and once I got into it, I did really enjoy it. And I did find the character relationships really interesting. And some of the writing was really beautiful as well. Um, I spoke about it at more length in the other video, but I would recommend Fortune. Um, and it was interesting to read something set in 1920s Trinidad because never read anything set in 1920s Trinidad before. So that was great. Then I also read The Magician by Colm Tobin, which I really enjoyed. This is a book which follows the life of the German author Thomas Mann. Um, kind of from his childhood to the end of his life, uh, which covers like the 1880s through to the 1950s, I think, um, which was absolutely fascinating historically. Like it was really interesting to read about this um, really fascinating period of time in world history and in German history and how Thomas Mann kind of interacted with all of these things. I've read one thing by Thomas Mann before, uh, Death in Venice, which I really enjoyed. And it was really interesting to read this novelization of his life. And I really loved the way that the magician looked at this period in history and how Thomas Mann and his family lived through it, interacted with it, and um, fought against it. It looks at the First World War, it looks at the rise of Hitler, it looks at Thomas Mann's experience kind of in exile during the Second World War. Um, and there's so many things in this book which are historically fascinating. So if you're interested in 20th century history, it's an absolutely wonderful book to read. But another thing that I really enjoyed about it was Colm Tobin's writing, because I've never read anything by him before. Obviously, he's a very successful, very well-known author. A lot of people love Brooklyn. Um, and I just really liked the subtlety of his writing. I feel like his writing was somehow not very emotional but also managed to like convey tons of emotion in a way that I thought was very impressive so I definitely want to read more by him in the future. And then the other book that I read for the Walter Scott Prize which um, was my favourite of the books that I read for the Walter Scott Prize and I thought was absolutely incredible was News of the Dead by James Robertson. This one I listened to on audiobook and it is a bizarre and wonderful book that 
really plays with history and like explores history as a concept and how we remember the past and talk about the past and that's one of the things I loved about it so much. So this book is made up of various different narratives. So we have Maya who is a woman in her 80s in 2019 and 2020 and she's looking back on her past and the past of the fictional place of Glen Clonic where she lives and then we have the journal of Charles Gibb um, in 1809 who is visiting this place at Glen Clonic and writing about his experiences and then we also have the Book of Connor, which is supposed to be this kind of Anglo-Saxon text about a saint. And basically all these narratives like weave together to tell the story of this fictional place, Glen Connock, but also to like tell the story of the history of Scotland and also to like tell the story of the history of history. Like it was just so cool. It was so good in so many ways. I love the way I really like engaged with history and like how historical fiction can not just look at the past, but look at like history and how stories kind of are passed down through generations and how we in the present might think about the past and how that affects um, our present um, and it was just really really interesting but it also looked really interestingly at how different people throughout history had kind of dealt with tragedy and trauma um, and I just in general thought it was absolutely incredible and the audiobook was really good as well and worked fantastically because of all those weaving narratives so I would highly highly recommend News of the Dead especially on audiobook it was fantastic that was my other highlight of the month that and Giovanni's run were the highlights um, and a Revi which I'll go on to but those are both incredible books the next book I want to mention is Circe by Madeline and Miller. Um, this is obviously a very well-known and much beloved book. This is a Greek myth retelling and I really enjoyed this. Um, I do feel like this book was a slight victim to the slumpiness of June slash the fact that I was reading too many books at once because it took me like three or four weeks to read Circe which is a lot longer than it usually takes me to read a book partly because I got the magician out of the library and then it was reserved by someone else so I had to finish the magician really quickly so I read the magician like in the middle of reading Circe um, and therefore I kind of put that Circe down for ages before I picked it up again and which I do feel like slightly diminished my reading experience which was you know my own fault but that's fine there was a lot about Circe that I really liked the writing is beautiful Madeline Miller writes incredibly I found the way this engaged with myth really interesting especially because I would have said before reading this that I didn't know anything about Greek myths, that I knew hardly any myths, and I was surprised by how many of the myths I did actually know, and how many of the names I was like, oh, I recognise that name. Um, it was really interesting to read it and be like, actually, a lot of this is in like popular culture and is in my subconscious. I just hadn't really thought about knowing it. So I really enjoyed like revisiting myths I hadn't heard of for a long time um, and kind of making connections between them. I feel like the characterization is very good and I feel like the world building in Circe um, and this kind of complicated mythological world and all of the different kinds of deities within it was really really interesting. So I really really enjoyed Circe. I feel like I had a slightly similar experience to it with Hamlet by Maggie O'Farrell where I absolutely love this book cannot fault it at all but I feel like it didn't have the same like huge emotional impact on me that I feel like it's had on some other people and it might be that I'm getting confused with Song of Achilles and it's Song of Achilles which is the more like emotional read um, and I really do want to read Song of Achilles as well because I enjoyed this so much um, but I feel like this didn't like hit me as hard as I wanted it to. Maybe I just read it over too long a period of time and I would have um, felt it more in my heart had I like read it over four days. Regardless, I still really, really enjoyed it. It was a really strong read and definitely one I'd recommend. And yeah, I want to read Song of Achilles in the future, definitely. And I might try and read Song of Achilles in a more contained space of time. The final thing that I have to talk to you about today that I read in the month of June was this. This is The Lost Future, Pepper Harrow by Natasha Pulley. I listened to this on audio book and this was a reread for me and this was also an utter joy and um, this is one of my favorite books of all time Natasha Pulley is probably my favorite living author um, and this is a sequel to her book The Watchmaker of Filigree Street which means I can't really tell you what it's about at all because that would spoil The Watchmaker of Filigree Street um, but this book is set in 19th century London and Japan um, and follows various characters who we met in the watchmaker of filigree street investigating strange goings on if you have read this book i'll link down below um, my reading vlog that i did for the read long um, but generally i just love this hugely and it's just that right balance between like poignant and dramatic and intensely fun um in the like fun that natasha pulley has with like history and kind of like sciencey supernatural stuff and i just i just loved it very 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 much and um, so i highly recommend the watchmaker of filigree street and its sequel the lost future of pepper harrow but not 
not too much to say about here today, except that it is glorious. So there we go, those are the seven books that I read in June. I actually did read some fantastic things this month, um, but I feel like it took me longer to get through everything and longer to get into everything than it usually does. But hopefully Giovanni's Room has like got me out of that reading slump. And also it's now Jane Austen July and I have so many books lined up for this month that I'm hugely excited for. Please do let me know down in the comments what you read in June, what was the highlight of your month, have you read any of the books I've spoken about? And that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.